everybody thinks the sync button on that shiny new construction software is magic. Push it and your books are perfect. If that were true, I could just sit on a beach sipping an umbrella drink while QuickBooks and Procore held hands and sang Kumbaya. Spoiler alert, they don't. Instead, it's usually like a food fight and you're the one stuck cleaning up the kitchen. Welcome to the Contractor Success Forum. I'm Wade Carpenter with Carpenter Cut and CPAs, alongside Stephen Brown with McDaniel Whitley Bonding and Insurance. Today, we're diving into the claims of that software salesman that sold you the fix for everything in your world. Yet here we are, been paying a monthly subscription for two years, and you still don't have it set up right. Steven, what are your thoughts to kick us off on this one? I don't know. I just love the idea of you drinking umbrella drinks and singing <laughs> Kumba Lava. Hey, what a great topic. It's not magic, is it? Mastering any software takes some certain level of headache, right? Thanks for this topic. Maybe it'll take some headache away from some folks that have been struggling with this. We did an episode maybe two years ago on the cost cut structures and things like that. And that's one of the questions I get all the time. So that's why I had to try to figure out how to help contractors without them having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to figure out how to do this. So this particular topic all plays into it. Let me set the stage with why these third-party apps exist. And again, I'm not picking on any particular software, but QuickBooks Online is one of the most common ones we see. And they're not really built for contractors. They're not set up to do job costing. In spite of what that Intuit salesman tells you, it is not built for contractors. So we have all these add-ons like Procore or JobTread or BuilderTrend or JobNimbus. Or, there's tons of them. And these are some we see all the time. And we need these other softwares. And there's things that they do very well for a contractor. But the short answer to this is those are not designed to replace your accounting system and the job costing, even though they say it's going to. So that's where I'm going with this. I think we could need to talk about what these other software do, where they do shine, because there's a place for them. But what are your thoughts on that? It's just amazing to me all the different products that are out there and trying to understand which ones to use. And to me, you would think, go with the product that's been around the longest because they have perfected the art of making it easier to use over the years. And that's not true either. Well, it's not. And it depends on your industry. There are certain things that are built for a different type of construction. Some of them are built for dealing with your customer or your the general contractor, doing the estimates and the pay side of that. Some of them are also built to where it's supposed to be controlling your subs and controlling your materials and purchase orders and those kind of things. As well as there are other ones that maybe you've got an electrical contractor that does big jobs that may take one type of work like a Procore or something versus electrical contractor that does a lot of service work that may need another one of these things. I'm not picking on or recommending any particular software, but they have different purposes. So this is why we need some of this stuff because you can't really get the good job costing, but they lead to this fallacy that you can get really good job costs by using their software. They have some great purposes. We can talk about those. I do think of you, Wade, as a job cost ninja or samurai. You are a warrior in job costing. And it's not a fluke that you're so passionate about it because you want our listeners to understand these concepts. It's not like you want to have to deal with them every day. You want to move on to other things as well. But this whole concept of getting software as a tool to help you track your job cost and letting things sync up, work a little bit automatically. We keep talking about AI and other things that can be used to help construction companies. But the implementation of it is another matter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And if you buy something like a Sage 300 or something like the construction real estate, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on the software alone. Mm -hmm. Then you're probably going to have a consultant to get it all set up and integrated and all that stuff. Somebody starting in QuickBooks, they need some of these same functionalities that are not built into QuickBooks. So some of the functionalities, as we already said, is dealing with the customers, generating estimates and invoices, as well as controlling your subs, creating purchase orders and dealing with your bills and trying to do your job costing. Some of them also have things like trying to attempt to cost out your payroll. But again, they're not payroll systems. They're not accounting system per se, but they lead to this fallacy that, hey, everything's going to sync with QuickBooks and everything is going to be hunky-dory. Going back to these things, I mean, QuickBooks alone, again, I'm coming back to QuickBooks. I'm not picking on QuickBooks. 
But QuickBooks Online, particularly, does not have the same functionality I've said a thousand times as QuickBooks Desktop or Enterprise. They're just throwing that enterprise term around loosely right now because they've got a QuickBooks Online Enterprise. But the desktop version, it's a tool. And the idea is how can we get the data in one place so that you can see as close to real time how we're doing on a job versus we figure it out six months later or we have to take it from here and then we go manually pull it out and write it down on a tablet or put it in Excel or however we want to look at our jobs. But it's a tedious thing and it's not something that we can do very quickly. You're saying it's difficult, but if your dream is to lay on the beach with an umbrella and have everything sync up perfectly, how would you go about getting to that point? Well, this is where I wanted to go with part of this episode is what actually syncs. So what are we talking about syncing? Do we have, you know, their estimates and the bills or purchase orders and the invoices that you send out to your customers? We have these job costs, codes that we talk about all the time, and that's one of the biggest hurdles here. But what I want to talk about right now is what syncs, but the direction it syncs. Some of them will work, like they'll sync the invoices over to QuickBooks, but then the payments go back or they generate the bills and those are supposed to go into the builder trends. Again, I'm not picking on anything in particular, but which way does it sync? Some of them will sync both ways. And you would think that would be great because everything's always in sync and everything's always real time and up to date. And it eliminates dual entry. That's one of the biggest things that we're looking for is we're not going to spend thousands of hours making sure things are in both places or spend a bunch of hours trying to manually come up with how did we do on that job. I hope I'm making some sense here, but when you're considering what software you have and what you're buying a software for, you need to see which way it syncs. That's one of the considerations I've had to do when working with contractors is if we're going to support them, which way does it go? You need to figure out your workflow. Some of them will only go one way, like there's a different type of sync for QuickBooks Online versus a QuickBooks Desktop. And some of them are very different for the different products. Even between the same product that syncs with desktop may not be the exact same thing as online. Does that make any sense whatsoever? It does. It makes perfect sense. I'm so glad you brought that up. I certainly wouldn't have known that. What do you recommend to someone? You've already got a system in place that's not syncing up properly. You've got a, one of our listeners that wants to set up a system that's more user-friendly. What advice would you give them? Well, too often we have people that come to us that have paid for this software for two years straight, and there aren't any farther along than the day they bought the software. The number one thing before you even consider syncing anything, a lot of these software already have a baked-in chart of accounts. And if they're generic, we've talked about it a million times, it's like, okay, the CSI master code format, there's 20 pages of code. And we have this analysis paralysis, we go way too detailed, and we may want all that detail when we're bidding the job, but we're not going to track our costs that way. Or are we going to have somebody bidding a job, but when they go costing this out, they pick some other cost code? Then nothing lines up. That's one half the battle. Number one, you got to figure out what that cost code structure is in one place, and it's got to mirror the other. That's the number one first step that I see go wrong. Got to get that part in place, number one. Okay. And then I would say number two is, long story short, I will say a lot of these things do not work as intended. You would think everything would just go back and forth. And we often see a lot of these things cause duplicates, duplicate invoices or duplicate payments. I've got one particular we're dealing with right now. They're insisting on syncing and it goes one way. This is Builder Trend in this particular case. They make an adjustment in Builder Trend for just a line item or just a comment on a bill. Well, it duplicates the bill in QuickBooks. And so you would think those things are, okay, they're synced up. No, it brings it in twice. And this is one of the biggest things I rail about because it can wreck a set of books in a heartbeat. It really can and can take hours and even we've had some problems where it can take days to fix some of these things. So that's what I'm trying to do is educate people on, number one, getting set up right, the structure, but knowing what it's going to do. And is it really best to try to get it in both places? It all sounds great, but are you really doing double work? Are you putting it into the builder trend or job tread and then expecting it to filter over to the QuickBooks and then the payment? So many of these things are easily the word sync, but they don't get where they're synced up, I guess, I guess I would say. But again, you got to think about the workflow. You got to think about the workflow. 
elaborate on that a little bit more. We're just talking about the workflow and the codes being in sync. Yeah, that's one of the setup things. After you get past that hurdle, you got to figure out which way does the data need to go and understand what's going to happen. Like in particular case I was talking about on Builder Trend, it only goes one way. So when you end up having these duplicates like that, it's frustrating because you got, in her case, she had duplicate payables and it can make a big mess, but having some safeguards on that and you've got differences in the way these things work. Some of them like QuickBooks Online, there's almost supposed to be real time versus is the way some of them are more of a manual sync. You have some of the Sage products as well as the QuickBooks desktop. Some of them you have to do a little more manual, but they do sync. This is one of the things that I have sort of learned as I'm explaining some of these things to contractors. I'll draw it out. If you show the workflow, but I was just going through this with a contractor on our payable system and how that works. I don't mean to go too far afield on this one, but this is a key thing that you really should know about this. Our payable system, it can come in one way, or you may get a bill handed to you in the field by the sub on the job. It may be riding around a truck, or it could get emailed to you. It could get mailed to you. And then how do you get it in the system? Maybe you're scanning it versus dealing with all this paper. And we've got ways to get it in by emailing it in or by dragging and dropping. And we make it as simple as possible, but it has to go into a certain place where we code it and get approvals on it. Does it go into QuickBooks? With that, it's already cost coded as well as at that step. If you got purchase orders, if they're putting that on the job, we can do the job coding a lot faster if the vendors will get that kind of stuff on there. Then once it's in QuickBooks, our system also syncs with that part. And now we can pay it from the other system where we also have the same contractor I was talking about. They go in and manually key these things. So one of my people was having to come back and say, okay, what did you pay this day? So we had to explain to them visually, and it saves so much time and effort. If you can understand, hey, these are all the moving pieces. In, in our case, we have eight to 10 moving pieces, and we brought it down like four. We saved a ton of time and effort just by explaining to them. And it's very hard to visualize some of these things unless you draw it out. So that was completely off the idea of where I was going with this episode today. No, it was exactly what I wanted to hear. It was the direction that I was more comfortable understanding being a non-accountant. The first thing that popped into my head was your comment about a sub giving a job form and an invoice that could be riding around in a pickup truck. That's crazy, by the way. Don't do that. Well, it happens all the time. Of course and, it does. And then we also have several of them that will text them in or they'll write up. I've got some right now we're handwriting on a piece of notebook paper and then they take a picture of it and they're sending us that. There are subcontractors that are not as sophisticated. We understand that, but you need to figure out the flow. That particular case there with accounts payable is one of the biggest things that I rail on all the time is, okay, it can't sit and ride around in your foreman's truck for a weeks on end before you decide to turn it into accounting. Number one, you need to get it in the system and get it as real time. You may not want to see that bill or pay it, but you need to know what you got on that job. After you close out the job and you sent the final invoice, they bring you that final bill from sub or whatever, then you can't capture that. I see it all the time. Our goal is, okay, we need the workflow to be as real time as possible and make it simple for everybody. So sometimes we'll build apps to where they can take a picture on their phone and tie it to the job because otherwise, they're not going to bring all those paper receipts back. But anyway, I got off on a tangent here. Again, my goal is to like, how do we protect the books? How do we get you good information so that these things don't happen? There are some times that we will actually rather extract it manually, or we have some ways, back end ways to get some of this stuff in if they're insisting on them putting it in. But we would rather make it all flow together, if that makes sense. Have one source of truth that this is where we are. And anyway, that's the goal of this. The flow of these third party software, you need to pay attention to what pieces you're going to be using, get that cost code structure set up properly, and then figure out what are the things that some things may work fine, like bringing an invoice over while they have credits or something like that. The credits crash the system if you do them improperly. So there are nuances to all this. And I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm geeking out here based on just years and years of seeing these problems. And again, none of this is, was a builder trend or job trend, Procore any of them, because they do have their places. 
No, I totally get it, Wade. I think as I listen to you talk about it, being a non-account individual, the thing that hits home with me so much is you got to set it up right, and then you got to test it. You have to test it and tweak it to make sure it's working the way you want to. And then you got to know enough about accounting to see which red flags tell you your system is not syncing up properly and then what to do about it. Yeah, we talked about like nail guns and how they've saved a lot of labor over the years. You can just hit that sync button on your software versus just you can hit the trigger on that nail gun. But if you don't have the nail gun pointed at the lumber and you ended up shooting yourself in the foot, that's what I end up seeing too often. <laughs> that's a great analogy. You can operate a nail gun from the beach with an umbrella drink. I get it. But no matter what happens, you have to put work in your systems. What's that old saying about plan your work and work your plan? Yeah. Well, again, I know people pay tens of thousands of dollars to consultants on setting some of these big systems up. And a lot of contractors cannot afford that. I know that. But that's why I was trying to set up a way to give people some good information, I hope. And we were spinning up the jobcostsamurai.com website of trying to get some information to people in a cheaper way to do it, as opposed to paying consultants thousands of dollars. So that was one of the hopes from this episode, that if nothing else, I made you think, if you're still paying for that software for years, and it's costing you quite a bit of money, but it's really not benefiting you, is it time to go get more software, or are you just going to walk into the same thing? Don't get sucked in by a salesman that says it can do everything, but then you end up, I see them all the time, they swap software, and they're back in the same boat as they were before because they never figured it out. I get it. Great advice, Wade. Thank you. Okay. Well, if any of this hit home for our listeners, we'd love some comments. Have you seen these sinks trash your system? Are you still having problems with setting it up and... Not seeing the forest for the trees as far as the cost codes. What problems are you having? What software are you using? We'd love to hear some of those things in the comments below. We do this every single week. And our goal is always to help our contractors understand and inform them on things that can make a difference in their world. So if you would, we ask that you like, share, subscribe. It always helps us out. And we will see you on the next show.